All right then, gang. So we've seen the basics now of how Node runs on a computer, but to what end? Well, ultimately, we want to create a website whereby the server-side code is powered by Node and JavaScript. So our server will be the thing listening for incoming requests from a browser. But how does this whole process of communication between a browser and a server work? Well, on a simple level, we type a website address into a browser and then we hit enter. That sends a request to the server that's powering that particular website. The server then looks at that request and it decides what to send back to the browser. Now, in most cases, that will be an HTML page and then that is then displayed in the browser. But it could also be images or CSS or JSON, anything coming from the server as a response. So when we type in a web address, or a domain name into the browser, how does the browser then know to send a request to the correct server? Because there's probably millions of servers powering millions of different websites on the internet, but somehow the browser magically knows to connect to the correct one. Well, to answer that, we need to know a little bit about IP addresses and domains. So IP addresses are like addresses for computers which are connected to the internet and all computers connected to the internet have a unique IP address to identify it, even yours and mine. Now some special computers are known as hosts, meaning they host websites on the internet and if you create and publish a website it will be hosted on a computer somewhere and that computer will have an IP address to identify it. Now, if we want to connect to a server on that host computer, we need to know its IP address to do it. We could then type that IP into a browser if we wanted to in the address bar to connect to our server. Now, IP addresses are just a series of numbers, right? And they would be really hard to remember, especially if you want to remember a few of your favorite different websites. So instead, we use domain names to mask these IP addresses. And then when we type a domain name into a browser and hit enter, it will find the IP address associated with it. And then it will use that to find the computer hosting the website and communicate with that. And this way it can send requests and get back responses to and from it. So say for example, we type in the netninja.co.uk into the browser and then we hit enter. Well, then the browser will look up the IP address associated with that domain and it will then use the IP address to connect to the server on the host computer with that IP. So then the server will then look at that request and respond probably with an HTML page. Now this lookup step all happens behind the scenes and it's not really something you need to worry too much about. So this type of request, when we type something into the browser and hit enter, that is a get request. It's made every time we go to a different web page, either by a link or directly typing into the address bar. We're sending a get request to the server to get a certain resource, in this case, an HTML web page. Now, there's also other types of requests, like a post request, which is normally used to send data to a server from a web form or something, but we'll learn more about those different types of requests later on. So this communication between the server and the client, the browser, is via HTTP. Now that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it's just a set of instructions which dictate how communication occurs. So if that didn't exist, then they wouldn't really be able to communicate effectively with one another. So this is kind of the same thing as human communication, right? We create languages, for example, English or Spanish, so that people can use those languages to communicate with each other. Clients and servers use the HTTP construct to do that. So then, in Node, we actually write code to create a server and listen for requests coming in from the browser. Now, this is totally different from a language like PHP, for example, where we don't have to create the server manually, and we have other tools which manage that for us, like Apache. But in Node, we manually create the server which lives on the back end of our website. 
and it's this server that then listens for requests from the browser and then decides what responses to send to the browser, right? So in the rest of this lesson, we're gonna be focusing on creating a local server on our computer using Node, which can then be used to actively listen for requests and respond to them. So then the first thing I'm going to do is create a new file and I'm going to call that server.js and this is where we're going to create the server. It doesn't have to be called server.js, what you call it is up to you. Now the first thing we need to do inside here is to require a core node module and that is the HTTP module. So I'll say const HTTP is equal to our require and we want to require the HTTP module. All right then, so now we have that, we can use it to create a server. And we do that by saying http.createServer. That is a method that creates a server for us. Now, if we wanted to, we could store this in a constant, and you can call it what you want, and that's gonna store the instance of the server in this constant for us, just in case you wanted to use it in the future for something else, like WebSockets. We're not gonna do that, I just wanted to show you that you can store the server if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, so this creates a server and as an argument, it takes in a callback function. Now then, this callback function is gonna run every time a request comes in to our server. So say we request the homepage, if we go to uh, www.mywebsite.com and it sends a request for the homepage to this server, then this function is gonna run and send it the homepage. Does that make sense? All right, so inside this function, we get access to two different objects. First of all, the request object, and secondly, a response object. Now, this request object comes loaded full of information about the request, such as the URL that is being requested. So if I go to mywebsite.com forward slash about, I would be able to find that URL from this request object to see where they've come from. Um, also other information like the request type, is it a get request or a post request, etc. There's other stuff as well, which we'll see later. And also we get this response object, and this is the object that we use to actually send a response to the user in the browser. So we have that, all we're gonna do inside here is just log a message to the console whenever a request comes in. So I'll say console.log, and we'll just say request made like so, okay? So we have this server now, but it's not really doing anything yet. It's just floating around in our file and it's not actively listening for requests being sent to it. To do that, we have to do something else. We have to invoke the listen method. So I'm gonna say server dot listen like so. And we need to pass in an argument into this and that is the port number that we're gonna to listen to. We'll talk about port numbers in a second, but for now we'll just go with 3000 and a second argument, which is going to be local host. And that argument is the host name. Now the default value of this argument is local host, but I'm explicitly typing it out. And then thirdly, we have a function right here. And this function fires when we start listening, just so we know that, yep, yeah, now we're listening for requests. So console.log, and we're saying here, listening for requests on port 3000. So now we're listening for requests on this host and this port number. But what does that actually mean? So first of all, localhost, what is localhost? Well, localhost is like a domain name that we'd use on the web, a bit like google.com, for example. But this one is one that takes us to a very specific IP address called a loopback IP address. Now, this IP address is 127.0.0.1, and it points directly back to your own computer. So that means that when we're connecting to the local host domain in a browser, the browser is actually connecting back to our own computer, which is then acting as a host for our website. So the host name localhost means listen for requests coming to our own computer. And this is how we use our own computer as a host when we're developing a website. But there's also one more thing to understand, and that is port numbers. So a port number represents a specific channel, gateway, or port on our computer 
that a certain bit of software or server should communicate through. For example, on your computer, you've probably got a lot of different software that connects to the internet and receives and sends data. Skype, Discord, mail clients, etc. Now, they will all be doing this via different port numbers to keep information separate from one another. So you can kind of think of port numbers as a bit like doors into your computer through which internet communications can be made to different programs. Now, our server also needs its own port number to communicate through. Now, you're going to see many different values for this port number, but a common one is 3000 for local web development. So as long as your port number you choose doesn't clash with a port number being used by another program, it's fine to use. So when we use localhost, we also type the port number after a colon in the address bar after it. So the browser then knows to connect to our own computer via this particular port number, which is where our server is going to be listening. All right then, gang. So we have created now our server right here, and we're also listening to port 3000 on the local host for requests. So now we could start sending requests to this server in the browser. Now, before we do that, we actually have to run this file through Node. So let's do that. We'll say Node Server, which is the name of this file, and press Enter. And now we can see listing for requests on port 3000. So that's this console log right here. So now we know that this server is up and running and actively listening to requests or for requests rather to localhost port 3000. So now we could go to the browser and we could send a request. But before we do that, notice down here that the process is ongoing. It's still just kind of waiting there for a request. We don't get this path down here waiting for another command because the server is ongoing. And that's correct because we want it to be running in the background listing for requests. If you want to cancel out of this process to make the server not listen anymore, you can press Control and C and that cancels out of the process. I'm going to run it again though because I want to now go over and make a request to the server because when that happens, when we make a request, we should see this function fire and this logged to the console down here. So let me go over here and go to localhost colon which means port and then 3000. So if we press enter, we're not actually going to get any kind of response in the browser and it's just going to kind of hang. You can see the loading icon up here swirling around and it's waiting for the server to respond, but we never do actually respond. We do, however, see this logged to the console request made. So we know that a request has been made and we've detected that. We're just not sending a response back to the browser yet. Now, just quickly, this is logged down here in this console, but not in the console in the browser over here. And that, remember, is because this code is running on the server and not in the browser. So obviously, it's not going to log it to the console in the browser. The code isn't running on the front end. It's running on the back end. And so we see it in the terminal down here instead. OK, so now we know how to create that server and listen for requests and how to even fire a function when a request comes in. How do we then actually send a response to the browser? Well, we'd use this object right here. And we're going to take a look at that a lot more in the next lesson.